Sports.com video on how to make your own flagstone bench. I'm David Clausen. I'm here with my father, Hans Clausen. And Dad, we're going to make a uh, flagstone bench here. Um, just explain quickly uh, what it is and what the client wants, and um, we'll get into the specifics after. Basically, in this case, we're setting up a flagstone bench uh, up on this uh, front entrance behind us and we will explain to you all the parts that are necessary and the things that you need to do to do it properly. Great. Okay, we'll get right to it then. We're going to show the uh, viewers here the stone that you bought. It costs roughly, what, about $200 uh, for yes, everything? Yes, depending on where you're at, uh, what part of the country. Uh, for us, it is approximately $200, taxes all included. Now this is Colorado Red Flagstone. I'm going to point down here. This is the top part. This is going to be the bench part, right? Yes. This here is uh, 54 inches in length and 14 inches in width. And in order to get this um, to um, 18 inches in height about, we have four of these uh, pieces under each side. I'll zoom in real quickly, okay. I'm showing three right here. We got two laid yes, out. Yes, we but... have two on the layout and then okay. we want to show you the layout too. Okay. But each of those is approximately three and a half to four inches in thickness. So three and, and a half to four inches in thickness for with each the one. With mortar joint and all, you should end up around 16 inches. Great. And then with the top piece being two inches, we'll end up uh, at about 18 inches. 18 inches. So just so that the uh, viewer knows what to order from a stone yard, this top piece you said was 14 inches wide? Right. By 54 inches in length. 54 inches in length. And then the thickness of this uh, bench piece? Uh, I think we're looking at, in this case, at about two and a quarter inches. Two and a quarter inches. So if they go above two, they would be in good shape. That's fine, yes. Okay, and then now uh, these pieces, pieces right here, um, you said the thickness is three and a half to four inches yes. per piece? And uh, we have eight inches in the front part. Eight inches in the front part and wide. Ten inches on the long side. And 10 inches on the long side. So, you, so 8 by 10 and 3 and a half to 4 inches exactly. in thickness. So you end up of it sitting 2 inches in on this top piece and we're going to set the base about 4 inches in underneath. And in order to get it right, mm -hmm. what we do, we went up on this pad where it goes and as you can see, we dry laid it out. So you suggest to the viewer that they need to put a pencil mark in so they know what it's going to look like and get the exact measurements, right? Yes. And then that way too, you have an idea, like here, where they wanted it this far from the wall itself and that far from the railing. Okay. Now you have to keep in mind that this part of the front porch is running downhill. Okay. So when you lay this, you have to have slightly more cement under here than you do under here because this is the low part, this being the high part. So by keeping this a little tighter and this a little higher, mm -hmm. you can see on the bubble we're running downhill. And Let me you... zoom in here on the bubble. We can see that it is running downhill and that's because the uh, porch has to run downhill for the water, but we want the bench to be level, is that right? That is correct. Okay. So, so we're going to put in a little extra cement, and we'll show that here in a minute, on this stone compared to that this stone one there. Okay. And as you can see, you have the 8 inches facing you, the 10 inches going back for the support. Now you can vary this. If you want to, we're sitting 4 inches in. You can go five inches in or even six if you feel like these are spread out too far. Depending think, on what the, the viewer wants to do. What, what, yes. The aesthetics. And, and for the aesthetics. Length, exactly. And the length of the top piece determines also where these should sit. But you get a good feel by laying it out with a pencil. Because that we know, the, the mark that I'm zooming on the camera right now, I'll zoom in a little bit better we know that that's where the bench is going to go so that's where it's going to be and that's stuff. where the top piece will end up at great okay i think that gives them a good idea so about two hundred dollars in stone that's colorado red of course every stone varies and depending on the part of the country you're at but this gives them a good idea of the dimensions they're going to be looking at 
and uh, we'll get into uh, laying it here in a second. We're going to mix up the cement that's going to be required to lay this bench. Now, uh, we already put into a wheelbarrow masonry sand, and then you put in, well, you have masonry sand on the bottom, and Portland type 1, 2. I'll show the viewer what that is in just a second. Um, now, how many uh, shovels of sand do you have to how many shovels right, of Portland? Right here, we basically have one bucket of sand. Okay, which is about five sand. shovels. And then I added three shovels of type one and two CMAX. Okay, let me zoom in on it Portland over here. CMAX. So they need Portland type one, two. Uh, we've had a good luck with CMEX. There's other good types, but uh, this is what we're using. The important thing is that they get Portland type one and two. Is that right? Yes, that uh, works fine for what we intended to do. Now, what you want so to wait, do. So let me get back to that. So you figure about five shovels of sand to three shovels of Portland. Is that about That's right? That's correct. Okay, anywhere in that mixer. Now you're mixing up with a hoe. Um, if the viewer doesn't have a hoe, can they just do it with a shovel? Yes, you can. You don't. It makes it a little easier. Uh, what I do is I dry mix it first before I add water. Now the one thing you want to remember is you do not want too much water in here. So add a little bit at a time because if it's too wet, you, you cannot lay your heavy stone on wet cement. You will squeeze it together. Oh. So the idea is not add a little bit of water as you're mixing and make sure you have this cement on the stiff side. I see. Okay, we'll get it mixed up and then we'll show the uh, viewer what it looks like. We got okay. it uh, mixed up now. And so this is about the consistency we want. We want a little bit stiffer than what people normally would lay with bricks or other... Uh, Lighter material. Okay. Uh, so let me so zoom in. As you can see, this is fairly stiff. Uh, however, you need it with that heavy stone so you can maintain your joints. So we shall go over there and start laying some of these uh, stones that we have, the base for the bench. Yeah, here, you okay. got some uh, cement down um, at the base where you're going to lay your first stones. So you just put a little cement down, not too thick. The reason I do it here, the client insisted on having the bottom where no cement is showing. Oh, we I have see. to attach it a little bit, so we're laying it so you can't see the cement that's under there. Yet, it gives us enough strength to hold it. You've got to have some under there in order to do it properly. Now, when you're leveling it there um, from each side, you're trying to get it level on both sides? Or? Yes, I try to, but remember we were talking about having to have a little more cement under here than we do under here. I see. So, what's going to happen is we can't do about anything about the first course, but the second course we're going to pick up these slightly versus this one on this side. Okay. I'm going to lay this side in here now. As you can see, I have very little cement under here. I'll spread it out so it doesn't squeeze past the stone itself so you get that dry laid look. I see. Because like you said, the client does not want the joint to show on not the bottom. in this case. Under normal circumstances, you would try... You could have a little thicker. Yes. You, you would have that. Mm -hmm. I have a little hammer here. I'll try and get this down so it sits solid. Now, if they want, they could just take a little hammer um, and just tap it lightly. Yes. A metal hammer. Yes. This stone is thick enough so you can take a regular hammer you don't need a mallet like I have to tap it down. So you can see the first is laid. Then I'll go across here. I can see by the bubble that this needs here. to be picked up right here. I'll focus in on the bubble, okay. Here is a level point and it looks like we're about a half inch low with that part there. I see. So I have three stones left to do something about level. So then you get it so it's level when they go to sit down on it. Correct. Okay. 